Today I'm painting a waterfall scene in gouache on watercolor paper and I created this painting for my draw this in your style challenge that I'm running on my Instagram. If you guys want to participate you can check out the description of the video for more information but to make a long story short you can take this painting recreate it in your own style use the hashtag that's on the screen right now tag me post it on Instagram and then I will reshare some of my favorites. One quick note, I apologize for this part of the video being a little out of focus. I had some issues with the footage from my other camera in that my head was in the way because it's been a while since I made a video and I'm a little rusty, but I promise it will get better. Just give it a minute or so. This painting is done mostly from imagination. What I mean by mostly is that I recently revived my TikTok account and I'll have a link in the description if you guys want to follow me on there. And I found this whole side of TikTok of people just sharing videos from all over the world. And I found some accounts sharing footage from the Pacific Northwest. And if you're familiar with my work, you know that that's the type of environments that I love the most. But unfortunately, I live in Southern California, so we don't really get those and I can't paint them from life. So the best thing I can do is watch videos, look at photos, and just be inspired by them. So that's what happened with this painting. I didn't use any particular video as a straight up reference. I just used them to inspire me, to inspire the mood and the feeling of the general scene. I wanted this painting to have a kind of a dark and moody and gloomy vibe, but also feel like it has some serenity to it and I wanted it to capture the intensity of the waterfall with some stillness of the surrounding landscape. So that was what I really was focusing on throughout the painting. And I tried to choose colors and lighting in such a way that it would help achieve that purpose. I usually start paintings with a fairly messy watered down layer of color just to block in the major masses. In this case I went straight to more opaque paint. I worked with it more like I would with oils. I'm not sure why I did, I just kind of wanted to try a different approach. It's good sometimes to experiment with different things that you're not too familiar with because you never know what you'll learn and you might end up with something that you really like. In this case I really really love the way this painting turned out and it probably wouldn't have looked the same if I had approached it the way I usually do. I already knew that my main focal point was going to be that waterfall in the middle. I'm not touching it yet because it's going to be very light in value, so I want to put down the darker colors in the scene first because depending on the value and intensity of those colors, the color of the waterfall will be affected differently. Painting water can be tricky and you can see me adding all sorts of different colors in that waterfall. There are parts of it where you can see the sort of turquoise of the water where the water is a little thinner, a little foamier. Uh, there are parts of it where it's just straight up mist and foam and there are parts of it that are a little brown, maybe where some mud or some dirt is being mixed in with the water. So you have to really be conscious of how water is behaving and why. One thing that I like to do is imagining it, what's beneath the water and how it's affecting the surface. For example, if the water is running on top of some rocks or it's dipping into a crevice or something, the water on the surface will behave differently. There will be foam or it'll get darker or lighter. And the same goes for how the water reflects parts of the scene. Rocks will reflect on the water grass will reflect on the water, the sky will reflect on the water. So my best advice if you struggle with painting water is to start by looking at water, look at videos of water, look at paintings of water even better so you can see how other artists approach painting water and then learn from that so that 
you can have an easier time painting from imagination. Don't jump straight into painting it from imagination because you will probably fail. I did a decent amount of studies of water from photos and from master uh, from master paintings before I felt even remotely comfortable painting it from imagination. I'm going really dark with some of those contact shadows because again, I want to add to the general gloominess of the scene, but I'm not using straight up black paint. Using just black usually ends up making things look a little bit dull. What I'm doing is I started with a mix of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna, I believe. It could have been alizarin crimson. And then I added a little bit of black here and there if I needed that mixture to be a little darker. But doing that will give you some color, even in the darkest darks, and that will make the painting feel more alive. And the same goes for highlights, by the way. None of the, none of the white highlights in this scene are actually fully white. Even the, the foamy dry brush on the waterfall is white mixed in with a little turquoise here and there and a little yellow here and there. I think I used Naples yellow mixed in with it. Painting from imagination also means you have to be constantly aware of the lighting conditions in your scene and the different textures that various parts of the environment are made of. For example, you can see I put some sort of bluish grays on top of those fallen logs and on the top of the rocks in the background. The reason for that is because I know that the scene is overall very humid and very wet. You know, it's right next to a waterfall. It looks like it just stopped raining or it's just about to start raining. So it's a very humid environment. So everything is pretty wet. And because everything is pretty wet, it's a lot easier for those objects to reflect the things around them, like the sky or like, uh, you know, various elements of the scene. So that's why I'm adding those light sort of bluish grays because those objects are catching the light and the color from the environment surrounding them. Another thing I was conscious of throughout the process was creating a composition that helped direct the viewer's eye towards the center of the scene, towards my focal point. So you can see those that log on the right side of the composition is pointing directly at the waterfall. There's another log on the left hand side also doing the same thing and the little uh, branches sticking out from the trees on the right are also pointing towards the waterfall as is the slope of the mountain at the top. Everything is converging into the waterfall, which is where I want people to look. So all of these things are done consciously for that purpose. And another thing I'm doing for that is making the edges considerably darker than everything else and making things near the waterfall lighter in value and a little bit more saturated. And you'll see me add some stronger greens on those mossy rocks, again, to just kind of like get people's attention. If the whole scene had the same intensity, the same level of detail, the same level, the same values, there would just be no actual point of interest. People would not really know where to look. Your brain wouldn't know where to look. You might because you know what you're supposed to look at, but it wouldn't make the scene as pleasing. 
And at the end here, I'm dipping my brush in some watered down off-white mixture of paint. And I'm using some splattering effects around the waterfall to sort of indicate those water droplets rising up into the air. Um, I could have painted them individually with the tip of my brush, but nature is messy, nature is random, and there is hardly any way you can achieve that consciously and mechanically, so to speak. So sometimes it's good to just let the brush do its thing, use random textures, do some smudging with your hand, use a mixture of techniques to sort of achieve and suggest a look. And as you can see, when you look at it up close, it's still kind of a messy bunch of random shapes and strokes. It's not fine detail except for little select areas of the painting. But when you look at it from a distance, it reads, it looks fine, and it conveys the mood that I was going for. So as far as I'm concerned, I'm happy with the result that I got. As I said before, you can enter my Draw This In Your Style challenge. Check the description for more information. And if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe, tell your friends, and I will see you in the next one.